every Tuesday, we bring you men and women who tell us why and how they run their business. This week, we have Eunice Musembi, a businesswoman who runs a small cafe in Nairobi's Uhuru Estate serving tea and mandazi. Majina, Eunice Musembi. Nina umuri wa miaka 23. Mimi ni mfanyakazi wa hoteli. Biashara yangu nilifungua mwezi jana hapo Disemba. Nilianza na kiwango cha pesa 1015 kidogo kidogo. Nilikuwa na nimeanza tu kitu kidogo chai na chapati. Nikaendelea, nikaanza kupika mandazi kidogo kidogo mfuko moja, mfuko moja na nusu kaanza kupika nyama kidogo kidogo nikaendelea na ninapofanya hiyo kazi kuna vile kuna challenges hapa na hapa usipojipanga ama usipoandika unapata kwamba kuna challenges pesa haitoshi na faulipa wafanyakazi kwa hivyo usipojipanga vizuri unapata umetumia zile pesa zote kwa matumizi na baada ya siku unapata haujabaki na baki lolote kwa hivyo huwa niko na kitabu naandika nikitoa naandika nikinunua kitu na record chini ndo nisikuwe na kuchanganyika ama nisikuwe na na, na less ambao naweza kelea mtu ama niseme pesa zimeenda wapi na katika hii kazi pia unaweza siku unajua huwa zifanani katika biashara wakati mwingine unaweza pika utarajie vitu zitaenda lakini ile tana ya watu inakuwa kidogo sasa ufai kuni huwa na jitia tu moyo nisiweze kurudi chini kwa sababu ukisema kwa sababu hizi vitu zimelala leo kesho sitapika inakuwa ni uzito usaidi yangu lakini sasa ni kujitia tu moyo napika hata kesho kama auju kutakuwa aje ninaendelea tu kufanya hivyo ndo niona at least riziki ingie kwa sababu ni dunia Atufai kulalamika kila wakati hakuna kazi au oh, sijui government tusaidie hapana ni wewe mwenyewe utafute ni mwanzo sija train hii kazi ya hoteli nilimaliza nilipomaliza shule nikataka kuenda kufanya hiyo kozi ya catering nikapungukiwa na pesa siku imalizia nikarudi hasa wakati na save hii pesa yangu nataka niende nikajiendelesha masomo yangu ili nikawe Right, interesting business right there, and she certainly has taken an initiative to ensure that she's not waiting for a job, but is doing something to create employment and also get some earnings. Now, it's time for your money, and I had mentioned earlier that we're going to be talking about financial intelligence for your children, and joining me to have that conversation is Waidaka Gatumia, who is the general manager for Centonomy. Good morning, and... Great to have you. Good again. morning. I have missed you, Mike. I don't know. <laughs> what did I, mean, I do? I'm, I'm, what did no, I do to you? No, you've it's just been, been very busy, and I guess you've been educating and empowering people on their money, which is a good thing. It is. It and is. let's start off with that lady there, Eunice, who basically is running what we'd call a kiosk, a food kiosk, but a good initiative. Mm -hmm. But maybe just uh, nuggets on how she can move her business from where it is now to the next level. Um, okay, one of the biggest issues that we have with SMEs, especially in Kenya, is that many times the value in the business is in the entrepreneur. So at least from the story that I was watching there for a second, it looks like she's the one who's doing she most runs of the, the cooking. Business. She's, she's doing the everything. one behind the business. So she needs now to begin to bring other people on board mm -hmm. um, to, so that she's able to grow beyond just what she's able to do right now. See, in many businesses, if you don't show up for work, then there's no cash flow. Absolutely. You're the one with the keys for the, the office and the kiosk <laughs> and whatever it is that you have. Mm -hmm. So if you don't show up, there's no value. Mm -hmm. So she now needs to begin to think how do I increase value by adding my multiplying my time how do you do that have other people on board maybe mm -hmm. that might be a place to go or now begin to look at new markets around the area mm -hmm. so maybe she can still handle the business as it is grow it a little bit more and then bring more and would that be board. the difference between mm -hmm. being a business owner of rather let me put it this way by being self-employed and running a business is there a difference yeah I think that could be one of them. I know we've had that, that discussion many times, self-employed, entrepreneur, mm -hmm. what's the difference? I think an entrepreneur, yeah, that's what we're trying to build, is somebody who builds and grows sustainable businesses. That this business makes sense without you. But many times in your business, and when I say that, I'm saying even me, the business that I've run before, right. uh, in, in my own life, I realize that um, 
If I'm not there, there's actually no value in that business. Mm -hmm. So I'm now working on it to make sure that when, even whether I'm there or not, the it business makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that's a great, that, that's what we should be aiming okay. for. And I guess many businesses, many SMEs probably face challenges because one of the areas that we don't get educated is to do with money. Mm -hmm. And today we want to look at financial intelligence for your children. Mm -hmm. And I do know that at Centonomy, you actually do have programs where you run specifically targeting children. That's right. Now, mm -hmm. let's start from what I'd call the basics. Mm -hmm. At what age is a child ready to learn about money? <laughs> uh, immediately. <laughs> immediately. Immediately. <they're> immediately. <laughs> um, I say this because how do children learn the best? It's by watching. So from the moment they come out of the womb, they're watching you. Mm -hmm. They're watching your expressions, they're watching your actions, they're watching what you say and what you do. And so immediately, one of the things that you hear is that what you say, aren't you shocked sometimes, Michael, when you go home and you hear your children say something, mm -hmm. and you're like, where did that come from? Where did that come from? <laughs> mm -hmm. They learned it by listening and watching other people. So begin to practice doing the right thing. It's not what you say, it's, it's what, what you, you do. do. Children learn more from what they see than That's what you do. That's a hundred percent. You know the problems that we've been dealing with? When you go to the shopping mall, mm -hmm. and this is you with your trolley going through the, you know, the shopping mall, mm -hmm. and you just put stuff. You don't have a list, you don't have anything. Mm -hmm. They're learning, they're watching you. And why are you surprised then that they keep asking for all the things that they want? What if you, before you Impulse. go out shopping, and you sit down with them and say, hey, what would you like today when you get to the supermarket? Then it'll force them to, to think. think. You put it down on a piece of paper. When you're walking through the supermarket, then they're looking for that one thing that is on the list. And not anything that's not on the like. list does not get into the trolley. You've already taught them a principle around money. So it is not so much about the age. It's about, in fact, teaching children, younger people about money is about you. And the biggest issue that we're having is that we and I, I'm including myself in this, are often indisciplined around our money and don't have a plan. Mm -hmm. And so our children are picking up the same habits. So the first place to begin with as a parent is you. Do you have a plan? Because they're watching what you do, not what you say. Okay. Yes. So I need to have a plan as a parent, but ideally yep. I would need to, and that's a good example mm -hmm. where I'm mentoring them by what they see. Exactly. But is there a time which comes that now we need to have a conversation? For instance, mm -hmm. when we are talking about, you know, there's when you, I have teens right now in the house, yes. and at some point we had to talk about the birds and the bees. I'm mm -hmm. not quite sure why it's <laughs> called the birds and the bees, that, but that's a story for another day. Yes. But we still had to have that conversation. And mm -hmm. you call the house to order and say, now, huh, I've been seeing trends that I'm not quite happy about about or are very happy about but now when it comes to money yeah is there a time you call the house to order so to speak yep. and say now let's discuss finances I think you should and it's from the age that they can begin to actually put numbers together you see sometimes you have to un understand once you've moved beyond that principle remember we talked about just simply doing a shopping list right you've talked about a principle but now it gets to the point where you are here is 10 shillings go Okay, 10 shillings, you can't even buy sweets anymore. You see, that's what inflation does. <laughs> Here's a 50 bob note. In our days, you get at least <laughs> yeah, 10 patos. <laughs> you could get enough <laughs> for that. Yeah. Now, go with this, and these are the things that you're going to do. Come back and you're able to break it down. I think once, as, oh, one of the good things is that once children now begin to manage their own, for instance, uh, allowances, and it depends on which household it is, have a meeting and actually say, you are going to receive some money now. This money is supposed to help you do this, 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 and this. If you do not have a plan by the end of the month, you will not have any money for what's going to happen. So let me help you do a plan and walk them through it as well. So the moment, I, I think once a child is able to do a little bit of basic arithmetic, mm -hmm. that's the time to have your first meeting. Mm -hmm. I think when there are major milestones, for instance, like moving from, let's say, primary school to high school, many times uh, those of us who went into boarding school and, and other places like that, that's a good space in which to begin to discuss money and how it works. Mm -hmm. I think when you do start making investments on behalf of your children, because many of us are doing, don't keep them out of the story, sit them down and say, hey, look. Have a discussion. Here's this document. This I've opened this savings policy for you. This is what it looks like. This is what I'm doing for you every day. So that when you're 18, you'll come back and you'll be able to get something out of this. So major milestones are a good place to have that meeting. And also, immediately the child is able to do basic arithmetic. Send them to the shop. 
-hmm. you'll be surprised what your children can be. Absolutely. Can be and that, be. of course, would now infer to the fact that they'll go with a certain amount of money mm -hmm. and they need to come back with mm -hmm. the change. Mm -hmm. Now, you talked about something which, in our days, that was unheard of allowances. Yes. I mean, uh, in this day and age, yes, you'll uh, probably <laughs> give an allowance to your children mm -hmm. for cleaning their room, yeah. uh, for keeping their room tidy, for cleaning their clothes and all that. Mm -hmm. But how... There are those who feel that that's almost um, introducing money too early to the child because mm -hmm. they also need to have the discipline yeah. of just being aware of their social responsibility that's without right. necessarily being paid for it. Not everything is for money. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll address it in two different ways. You, you caught me. Here's the thing. An allowance, you see, even if you're paying your children, let's say for work around the home and everything, you're not really giving them that. It's, it's a... It's a teaching tool. And I think if you're actually teaching the lessons, then it can make a difference. Mm -hmm. But if you're just doing it with no background, with no understanding, without the meeting that we've with discussed, no then, it, then it loses its purpose. Here's the thing. Let me give you an example. We, we run, for instance, as you said, uh, teens boot camp over mm -hmm. the school holidays for, mm -hmm. for teenagers at St. Onomy, and we, we run it in conjunction with Kayan Country Club. In fact, we're doing it this week. Last year when we did it, there was, we, we do an assessment of the children who come through. And one of the children who was in there, and I, I'm using the term children lightly, let me say the teenagers, because they're all between 13 and 17. Mm -hmm. One of them was receiving an allowance of 30,000 shillings a month. <laughs> 30,000 shillings a month? Yes. This is uh, before the age of 18? Yes. Let me just soak that in. Just okay. breathe, just yeah. breathe for a moment. <laughs> and I, I don't put pressure on your kids. But here's the thing. Is there anything wrong with doing that? In my opinion, possibly if the backing, yes. if the understanding is there, yes. again, depending on the maturity of the child, yes. I would say no. no. However, however, yes. if it is just 30,000, <laughs> here's 30,000, and you go blow it, then there's a problem. You see, the thing is, when I threw that number out, I know many people were very shocked. What, 30,000 shillings for That's allowance? But you see, you're also giving your child 5,000 shillings, for instance. Let's say, mm -hmm. which is about 1,000 shillings per weekend, Many parents are doing that, middle-class parents. There's someone in Kenya who's looking at you and saying, what, 5,000 shillings? Mm -hmm. that, you know what I mean? That's a huge amount of money. money. Yeah. Exactly. So the amount is not what matters. It's the reasoning and the learning behind it. Here's the thing. If you're teaching your children that when you work, that you're able to earn money, that's a lesson then that's a good thing. If you're teaching the children, when you receive cash from whatever source it is, that you're able to manage it, this is how you manage it, this is how you plan for the future, this is how you plan for what it is that you want. You see, we were learning from that parent now afterwards and we had a discussion. This child was actually investing towards one of their goals. They were saying, as part of their university, they would like to do a separate course on the side and they wanted to pay for it themselves. So this allowance was going towards, towards helping them to do that. Do you now see what? Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So without any context, then money doesn't. If it's 200 shillings without any guidance, it's as bad as 200,000 shillings without any guidance. Okay. That's so the, how do I, as a parent, mm -hmm. come up with a context to guide that <clears throat> amount? Because here, like you've mentioned, it's yes. not the amount. And let's be honest, mm -hmm. all of us have a different amount that we can give to our children yes. for whatever reason. Yes. But the context is what matters. How mm -hmm. do I come up with the context? Here's the thing. Everything around financial planning, about personal financial planning, wealth creation, and, and at Centonomy, we have begun to, to really get down to the core of it. There's a single question. What do you want? If you don't know what you want, then planning makes no sense. You must come back to the original point and say, I want to achieve this. What is it that I want to achieve? When do I want to achieve it? And how much will it cost for me to do so? When I know what I want, then the planning makes sense. sense. That's what the context is. Mm -hmm. If you want to live, I, I love that story of the lady who's running that hotel. Mm -hmm. And she said it, I don't want to be dependent on the government for, I know the government will build my road. Mm -hmm. That's no problem. I want to make my own money. Mm -hmm. she, was, she declared for herself what, she, what wants. she wants. She wants independence. So if I want independence, what does that mean? I must work in order to earn. Same thing, come back right back to the beginning, even with your children, and ask them, what do you want? Is it a PlayStation? Good. How do we work to get together to get to that PlayStation? Is it your, your, your uh, education? Some people are still, you know, even at, at that young stage, are thinking about uh, maybe it's university, but abroad. 
How do we work together to get to that place? Mm -hmm. Is whatever goal it is, that toy they want to get, that, um, that trip they want to take, mm -hmm. start off with what do you want? And then figure out from that point, how do you get, how do you get to there? The end? Yeah. All right. And of course, the other question then would come in context of uh, education and what we had as our education and now. Mm -hmm. For instance, there are those of us who went through school and you went through all the subjects without clarity of what you want to do. Mm -hmm. The youngsters today are a bit more clear. Although their idea of jobs is completely different, especially <laughs> for, for the older generation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you an example. I have a nephew yes. who one time basically had done engineering and went quite far in engineering. Mm -hmm. Then at the third or, or towards, he had only one year left mm -hmm. and decided that he wants to go into doing tattoos. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, for the dad, that was <laughs> mine. What, is, what are tattoos? Yes. But mm -hmm. maybe how do we help and guide our children to make career decisions? Because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. the question still remains, what do you want and how Correct. do you want to get there? Correct. Now, career guidance would come in and how to make money because there's yeah. all these new um, ways of making money That's that right. are completely unconventional. Mm -hmm. And so, again, it's the principle. There are tattoo artists who are extremely successful. Absolutely. But is it just because they're tattoo artists? No, it's because they are great businessmen and women. That's what the principle is. The, the principles of a good business versus the principles of a bad business are the same whether it's tattoo, whether it's engineering, doesn't matter. They are poor engineers because they're not good businessmen in running the business that they're running. At the same time, they are rich entrepreneurs who are tattoo artists, who have multiple tattoo parlors around the place. It is not about the profession, but about the principles that run that business. Is there a market for it? Are the, is there a good cost that it is? Are, are you having good financial planning around the money that is within that business? Do you have a good product that people actually want? Mm -hmm. Have you assessed the business plan? Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is teach your children about business right from the very beginning. Many of us are waiting, and, and I, I've said this before when we've come here, I applaud the Asian community in Kenya and around the world. The Asian community have understood how to pass wealth from generation to, to generation. generation. Why? Because because at the butcher shop, which I, which I have gone to near my place, I have been served by a seven-year-old. Now, I'm not going to tell you where it is because I know there are labor laws and everything around <laughs> that. But, that's, but he could also just be having work experience. Work he's experience. That's the thing. He's not getting paid. That seven-year-old, by the time he's 18, how much do you think he'll have learned about business? Massive amounts of, of, of knowledge within that period of time. The amount of, remember we were talking before we came on air about experience, work experience. That somebody has been in a shop ex environment and understood it, even simply by osmosis, being in the business. Just the presence. That young person has learned so much about what uh, wealth is and about what money is. Mm -hmm. I think again, remember I said at the very beginning, our children are not learning from what we say, they're learning from what we do. And so even in the experience that we go through, for instance, in the Centonomy Teens Boot Camp, we make sure that at the end of the boot camp, parents sit down with children and they have an honest conversation. And you tell your children, how did you get to where you are? We have another question which we ask, did you expect to be where you are? You know, many times children have no idea. You know, their parents thought they'd be pilots, they thought mm -hmm. they'd be air hostesses and, you know, travel around the world, but they changed their profession. And Somewhere. then th they need to begin to explain to their children that that doesn't mean that I'm not a success. It means that I shifted because I understood what my new goal was. Mm -hmm. So that idea of always being able to show your children rather than to tell them, that's where the difference comes completely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, you've... We're basing this on the assumption mm -hmm. that the, pers the parent talking to the child yes. is successful in one way or the other. Mm -hmm. There are those who are not successful. <laughs> where does that conversation <laughs> begin and where does that leave us? Uh, and, and by success here, I don't necessarily mean having money vi versus not having money. Yeah. There are those who possibly, let me take an example of a profession and say an accountant, yes. but maybe they're an accountant not because they would want to, mm -hmm. but because circumstances pushed them that way yeah. and they've found themselves still doing accounts because bills have to be paid, right. fees has to be paid, That's but they're right. not happy in their career. Again, and this is the thing, you can't fake it. In fact, the one thing that we as human beings are so excellent at is reading someone else. Mm. You can't fake it. And so the charge now comes back to you, Mike. I know I'm, I'm, I'm not being very helpful at this point, <laughs> but it comes back to you. Mm. 
if you are not passionate about the thing that you're doing, if you're not giving your all into what you're doing, you can't teach your children that you're excited to go to the to job that you don't do. want to do. So begin to think seriously about what can I do to increase my productivity even where I am. And it's not about necessarily changing your career, but understanding what you want to achieve. That you can begin to say that even if I'm an accountant, but I'm passionate. There's a story I read on, on Facebook recently. Um, and we use it in our training, that there's a lady who said, you know, she's really passionate about uh, fashion, yeah? But she's never really gotten into the industry. But she's able to express that passion even in the office that she is. Because she'll come into the office and say, hey, Mike, you know what, you'd look, you'd look great in a green shirt. Mm -hmm. You know, because she has the eye for she it. Has the eye for and it. so in the office, she's so happy and she's satisfied because people around her have begun to look great mm -hmm. because of her influence, even if she's not in fashion. Mm -hmm. You see, it's not about being in the business. It's about being passionate yourself. Mm -hmm. You cannot cheat your children. Mm -hmm. In fact, they're the ones who know you the best. The best. So don't try. Mm -hmm. Try and actually then live to the maximum. And when you're looking at, at including your children, this is one thing I thank God so much for my mom for. And mom, can I give her a shout yeah. out? Hi, mom, how are you doing? <laughs> uh, this is one thing I really thank God for my mother. Even as we were growing up, as she was motivating herself for the work that she was doing, she would motivate us. You know those motivational um, talks? They used to come on a cassette. Do you remember yes. cassettes? Oh, man. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so she used to have all these cassettes from wonderful books that would help her to grow. And we would drive to school listening to these things. At the time, I had no clue what they were about. Probably didn't even care But about it them. was affecting me. And as she got inspired, it would inspire us to achieve our dreams. Mm -hmm. So you need to get up. Do something that will make your children see, hey, you know mm -hmm. what, dad, dad is doing something great. Mm -hmm. Even if it is something very simple, but you're excellent at what you're doing, mm -hmm. your children will pay attention to it. And wherever you're excellent, you will be promoted no matter what. No matter what. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are certain uh, principles that govern finances. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we do them mm -hmm. not because we know that they're written. We just naturally have them or maybe like you <laughs> like you learnt them through our parents or yeah, the environment yeah. that we're in or like the family that you've talked about, yes. the Asian community that learn by seeing. Yes. What are some of those principles that maybe we can uh, learn even ourselves? Because we can learn together. This doesn't mean that we are the, um, you know, know it all and are yeah. teaching our children. Mm -hmm. This is a process that we can go through together. Yeah. What are some of those principles that maybe you'd lay down and say, these are the basic minimums that we must have as parents mm -hmm. as we are teaching our children. Let's also learn them. Okay. Number one, plan your spending. And I like to use that term because when I say budget, somebody just cringes and thinks it's yeah, the end yeah, of the world. Yeah, all those all it is that, is yeah. plan, your, plan spending. your spending. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Make sure there's a plan. Say, this is what I want to do with the money that I have, and hopefully I will get to the end of the month having done so. That's number one. Number two, uh, <clears throat> I'll use the second half of the, the term, gratification. Mm -hmm. The first one is what? Uh, delay. Thank you. <laughs> Mike, you've been learning a few things as we go along. <laughs> While I sit and I listen, and I'm taking notes as well. <laughs> Always think, how, how can we achieve it in the future? Because every time that you try and do something immediately, then means that you've not thought through it, you've not saved enough to get to that right. point. But always think about the second half of that statement. Delayed what? Gratification. Gratitude. If you are not then being gratified at the end of it, if there's no joy, then what are you saving for? Mm. You know what I mean? People think we are saving, we're saving and saving for what? Mm. Go on the holiday. Teach your children that, oh, this month we're not buying that toy. But guess what? Do you know all Come these months December, that we've been waiting yeah. December? Ah, now you go and there's no stress. Mm. So that's a second principle, delayed gratification. The third one is plant a seed. I know that sounds like you're in church. I don't want to go there. Almost say amen. <laughs> <laughs> But understand the result, especially of compounding. In investments, that's what it is. You put in a little amount and you wait, remember, in, in line with the delayed, delayed gratification, gratification, and it grows over time. People don't recognize the power of simple, small investments. Everybody is waiting for that 10,000 shillings, that 100,000, you know those large numbers for investment? Investment is 100 bob that you put aside and save daily. Mm -hmm. If you do that consistently over time, that's the power of off. investment. Mm -hmm. So that seed, it looks like nothing. But in that seed, there's multiple plants and seeds and a forest. Mm -hmm. But we always look at it and try and get the big tree. No, 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 no. Plant a seed. Mm -hmm. And over time, you will see the results coming back to you. I think those are 
three good okay. principles. Three good principles. All right. Yeah. As we wind up, the um, many parents now, those mm -hmm. who are able, and, and I'm not sure if it's those who are able or those who have learned the principles, mm -hmm. probably open an account mm -hmm. or save for the, on, the, on behalf of their children, whether right. directly or indirectly. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on that and how one should go about it? Uh, is it opening an account? Is it buying a piece of land for them? Mm -hmm. What is it that works? <laughs> All of the above work in the right context. What is the goal that you're working towards? So as I said, every, everything around personal, about investment is about the goal. So why are you buying that piece of land? Maybe that at some point they can be able to develop, have a home, all those different things. You see, that's a better reason to have a piece of land than maybe if you're trying to grow, for instance, let's say to, to for an investment, let's say for education, because that's a massive area that we can think about. So it depends on what the ultimate goal is again. Each one of those brilliant, ideas. Give your children a head start. I'm, I'm the kind of person, I don't know, many people think that it's terrible to leave your children an inheritance. I think it's actually a good thing. The terrible thing is to leave them an inheritance without any knowledge. Exactly. So in, invest. Well, even the good book says <laughs> that a wise man yes. leaves an inheritance for his children's children. That's right. Yeah. But if you leave an inheritance, and we see it in the newspapers every day, mm. if you leave an inheritance without the knowledge, you have made the mistake. So right. make the investment in teaching your children about money. When we started Centonomy, it was about teaching adults because we didn't get, the, get this education in school. And every parent who came to that class was like, I wish, I, I wish, wish I knew <laughs> when I was 20. So mm. as Centonomy, we opened the, the campus edition. So we are mm. dealing now with, with students in campus where we're training them on how to manage their money, about planning for their dreams, about understanding themselves in order to achieve their goals. And as we started training those campus students, the parents were saying, they are still too old. Mm. I need to have a teenager here at home. At home. And that's why we started the Teens Boot Camp, because we realized that the St. Tommy Teens Boot Camp is where the discussion about money can begin. Because many times, we as parents don't have the tools to begin the discussion, but we give you the tools in order to start that journey of wealth creation even with your children. Mm -hmm. So it's not about having had the knowledge, but at the point at which you have seen, like this morning, People are watching us and they are saying, hey, look, I think I need to have that discussion. Then start it. The, you can reach out to us, you can read a book, you can do various things that you, that you can out there, but start having that discussion. Because the, the issue is, you know, when we were kids, mm. in this African culture, you never discussed money. No, it was never discussed. You know what I mean? You, mm. ask, you ask for money and if you get it good, if you don't, good, you know, <laughs> there's no difference. Yeah. Actually spend some time speaking about it. Teach your many African children have no clue what their parents go out to do every morning. Mike, have you taught your kids what kind of work that it takes to be here early in the morning, to sit, to plan, to write out scripts, to be engaged, to be able to deal with people? Teach them that. Mm -hmm. Because when they see, ooh, dad is working hard and he's getting paid, those two things now begin to match in their minds. Mm -hmm. And that's where wealth creation begins. Begins. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's wind up with myths because many of us grew up with many myths about money that <laughs> money some grew up with the idea that money is evil others that money was for a secluded few That's others right. money was for the parents only mm -hmm. what are some of the myths that maybe you have um, managed to pick out from some of those boot camps and possibly <laughs> let's demystify them as we wind up here's number one that the school will teach your children about money it's not going to happen. Please, parents, <laughs> it is you. Teach your children about money. Take that chance to actually help them to grow. So others will not teach your children. You teach them the principles that matter to you. As you said, that there's a certain group of people that money is for, no. You, that's why I love to read autobiographies. Why? Because you begin to see that not everybody who has ended up with wealth is the one who started off with wealth. No, and not everybody who started off with wealth ends up with wealth. Mm. Read as many autobiographies as, as possible. Money is not only for a select few. And the last one is this. Even if you have never learned, it does not mean that you cannot start now. Mm. The issue is this. What do you want to achieve? Are you willing to work for it? And if you are, there are people like us at Centonomy who will help you along your journey <laughs> to get to that place. Okay, you can I, achieve it. I, I think this would be the point where now you tell any parent who'd want, in, who'd want maybe to further that discussion and maybe yep. just get some knowledge. Because again, yep. it is good to be equipped. It's yes. good for you to have the knowledge to know how to pass it on. Uh, how would they go about that? Please do reach out to us, um, centonomy.com. You can also find Centonomy on Facebook. Give us a call. We're actually running the Teens Bootcamp 
during this holiday. It's actually starting this Wednesday at the Karen Country Club, and it's only 15,000 shillings for a three-day boot camp. And then on the fourth day, we have a, a conference with parents where we actually begin those wonderful discussions around money, and that's how we do it. If you have older children, obviously the campus edition, and since we are both young, we are still <laughs> young at heart. Um, even for the adults, we mm. always can begin to learn whether it's about career development, whether it's entrepreneurship, whether it's personal financial management, we are there to assist us to grow, to begin to achieve our dreams. That's what Centonomy is it's all about. Waidaka yes. Gatumia, General Manager for Centonomy, thank you very much for joining us this morning thank and you. giving us just those tips and nuggets on financial intelligence for your children. It is now just about 10 minutes to 9.